James 1, 22 to 23. Be, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers, only deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Verse 24. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straight away forgetting what manner of man he was. Go straight away forgetting the manner of man, the manner of woman he was, or she was, as the case may be. Listen this morning, wherever you are watching us from, the topic says, forgetting who you are. The, great, the greatest tragedy of a man and an individual is to forget who you are. Forget where you are coming from. Forget where you started. And even forget your family. That, could, that is the greatest tragedy. Now the Bible has said it clearly. It says, For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straight, straightway forgetting what manner of man he was. This place is also likened in the natural. He said, it's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. And immediately you have looked at your face in the glass, in a mirror. That's what the glass means, a mirror. And you forget how your face looks like. You forget how your face looks like. That is a tragedy. He says, the man goes away and forgetting the manner of man, the manner, the manner what you carry. You see, many of us have forgotten the manner of person we are. Many of us have forgotten the kind of authority we carry. Authority is different from power. When you know the authority you carry, you say, go, go it straight away, forgetting the manner of man, the manner of man. And First Peter 2, 9 to 10 has, has, you know, has, you know, spelled out clearly what the manner of man you are. He said you are a chosen generation. You are a holy nation. You are a peculiar people. Now, it's going to be very sad you are listening to me. You don't understand the manner of man, the manner of woman you are. You don't know where you are coming from. You don't know what, what, what is your position in Christ Jesus. You don't understand anything. And that, see, and it's like it to somebody hearing the word of God, you hear the word of God, and you don't do it. That's what it means. That's what it means. You hear the word of God and you do not do it. Say, be doers, be doers, be, be hearers and not doers of the word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And that is the only way you can stop misbehaving. That is the only way you can easily forget who you are, what you represent. It's not enough to hear. It's not enough to hear God's word like you're hearing this morning. You have had in different fora. You have had different, you have even read Bible so many times. You have read, you have finished the whole Bible. New Testament and Old Testament. But you know the greatest tragedy is that you don't do it. You are not a doer. 
and they are, the Bible has tried to compare what it means if you are not a doer. You are just a hearer. It has likened it to looking at yourself in the natural, in a mirror, in a glass, as the case may be, and not recognizing who you are. That's what it means. The scripture has likened it to if you are just hearing God's word but not doing. The scripture has tried to tell us what it means in simpler terms. It means it's like when you look at your face in a mirror, you can't recognize yourself anymore. You can't recognize your face. Maybe somebody, you know, you know did something with pencil to, you know, give a sketch of your face and, you know, put it in a glass. And we present it to you. You begin to ask the person, who is this? And you are the person that looked at yourself. You've been looking at yourself in the mirror. And you fail to recognize that the pencil work resembles your face. That's what it means. That the pencil, the artwork, the artwork resembles you. That every other person can say, ah, you resemble, this thing resembles you. And you that has the picture, you that has the artwork, you that the picture, the artwork was done on your behalf, has failed to recognize that this, this artwork resembles me. It's likened to a man who looks at himself and goes away forgetting how the kind of person you are. Many of us out there do not understand who we are in Christ Jesus. Many of us do not understand who we represent, what we stand for, what we believe, the kind of authority we carry. The Bible has described what we stand for, that a, 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 a holy nation. You'll be separated from others. You, be, you are holy. You'll be separated. You'll be redeemed. You are a peculiar person. You are special. We are special. You are not ordinary. Now, if you, love, if you stop looking at, if you, if you don't understand who you are in Christ Jesus, you can't go very far in life. That is the truth about it. If you don't understand who you are, you can fight on the streets of Lagos in Oka. You can fight anywhere. You can fight inside the plane. You can fight inside the bus because you don't understand who you are. Baby Lord, you need to relieve all of that consciousness of who you are in Christ Jesus, what you represent. It's like when you put, let's say, you have an ambassador. You know what ambassador means? Ambassador means somebody is representing a country. Nigeria has ambassadors in foreign nations, starting from African countries to Europe to America. They always appoint a man that represents the interest of Nigeria. Of course, you know you are an ambassador of Christ. Of course, you know that you are, wherever you are, you are an ambassador. You have been appointed by the Supreme Court of the Universe. You are the new order. You are not ordinary. What you are carrying is not ordinary. It's not something you can buy with money. You see, we need to begin to understand who we are in Christ Jesus. You need to understand who you are, where, what you represent. That will make you not to do some things. That will make you not to say some things. If you understand who you are, you will not allow your lips to say some things and utter some things. If you understand who you are, there are things you will not allow to go on in your life and your home, in the neighborhood, because you represent a group. You represent a class of people that have access to the throne of grace. You represent a people that when you stand and lift your hands to heaven, God will hear. Angels will bow. I'm just trying to remind you who you refer, who you are. Now, I, let me come back to the, to the ambassador. Maybe Nigeria has appointed an ambassador to represent her. Say in Cote d'Ivoire. With all the form fair, with all this, you know, the, the National Assembly, they have to approve an ambassador. So it's a special, and it's a special appointment. And usually they have been addressed as His Excellency. Because an ambassador of Nigeria to Cote d'Ivoire, represent the president of this country. He's given every privilege, he's given every, he walk into any place, everybody will stand, I mean, he's given every privilege that the president of our country can also get. And let's say that ambassador gets to that, the country of his, of his posting, and immediately he's entering the country, he forgets 
who he is. He forgets that he's in Côte d'Ivoire to represent the interests of Nigeria. He forgets that he's an ambassador. He forgets what he, what he represents and starts behaving anyhow. Be seen in pubs, drinking beer, doing all manner of things, going to night parties, doing this and doing that. Obviously, it's going to be a disaster for that country, for his own country, or her own country. It's going to be a, a disaster. It's going to be a, a, a failure. So as an ambassador, there is a big room, there is a level, there, there, there is a standard you must not go. You must not go below certain standard. As an ambassador, you carry yourself hard. Because every, every assistant, you are, giving a, what, you are giving what is called a letter of credence. If you are going to represent Nigeria to any country, the, the Ministry of uh, uh, Foreign Affairs, after the approval, it's not, a, it's not a small thing. Now, if an ambassador of a country is giving so much respect, what for? That's an ambassador of Christ. You've been approved. You've been appointed. You've been given every, you say that a chosen generation. You are a chosen people. We have been chosen. We are not ordinary. Now, when you begin to understand the intricacies, when you begin to understand the things that are involved, when you are chosen, God has not chosen you, has predestined you before you were born. He has selected you. He has approved you. He has appointed you by the Supreme Court of the universe. In other words, you must behave yourself. You must do the right things. You must understand, once you understand these things, once you understand who you are, believe you me, there are things you will never do. Tell them God, there are things you will never get involved with. There are things you will never say with your lips. There are, if there are behaviors you can never manifest because you know who you are. Now, if you don't understand who you are as you finish this service, you go home forgetting what I've said. Believe you me, you are going to misbehave. We are going to fight inside the corker. On the slightest provocation, we are going to, we are going to do some manner of things that, and that's all people, especially Christians and believers, they, they disgrace themselves. Praise the Lord. They disgrace themselves because they left their house, they left their home without this consciousness. They left their home without knowing who they are. If you don't know who you are in Christ, not, you see, it's beyond coming to church on every Sunday. It's beyond praying. It's beyond doing deep spiritual exercises. It's more than all this. You need to understand foundationally that who you are. You are a class. You belong to a class that God can never neglect. You belong to a class when you pray, your prayers will be answered. You belong to a class that you can decree a thing and it shall come to pass. You come to a class that you represent a whole government of God. The government of God on this planet Earth. You are not ordinary. You are not ordinary. Tell the neighbor you are not ordinary. Somebody's not saying that. Say to the neighbor you are not ordinary. Now imagine where you forget who you are. Because of not being a doer of the world. A doer of the war is more than a strength of the war. A doer of the war is more than a student of the war. A doer of the war is more than who, a listener to the war. A doer of the war is what makes you not to forget who you are. You know, the simple thing, simple test to know if you are forgetting who you are. If you are forgetting who you are, the simple test. One can carry out on yourself, can carry it on anybody. It's when you are not a doer of the war. It's when you are not a doer. You are just a hearer. And let me tell you, if you are not able to do God's word, you can easily forget who you are. And if you forget who you are, it's going to be so disastrous. To your family, to your own personal life, to the environment you find yourself, because you don't do the war. The biggest challenge today is that people hear, you hear every Sunday, in different fora, in different places, good word preached by men and women of God. But unfortunately, to do it has been a problem. He said, such persons are like people that look at look at themselves in a mirror. 
And straight away, they forget the kind of person they are. If you are not a doer, if it's not, if it's not ingrained inside your subconscious, if you are not a doer of God's word, believe you me, you can never know who you are. The matter of person you are, there are things you don't go, there are places you don't go. It's not by, it's not by being legalistic, it's something within inside you know who you are. Where you live, there are conversations you don't enter into with anybody because you know who you are. You need to understand who you are in Christ Jesus. You need to understand your position in Christ Jesus. Positioner, you need to understand who you are, where you where you're coming from, and where you're supposed to be. Now, nobody you don't need to you don't need to kind of to impress anybody. Inside you, you're living it now. You're living it out. It's inside of you. You don't pretend. You don't do it because you want to impress a member of the church. Or you want to impress your wife or your children. No, it's just right inside of you because you know who you are. Now, when you know who you are. Grace will be available to you. We you know who you are by doing God's work. If you don't know who you are, believe you me, I can go on and on and talk for the next two hours. To plead with you, please. Obey, obey, obey God's word, please. I will need that. Please do this. You can't do it. You know why? Because foundationally, you don't know who you are. Am I talking to you this morning? Do you know who you are? Ask everybody, do you know who you are? Ask your neighbor, do you know who you are? Now, if he knows or she knows who, who he or she is, then doing God's word will become very peace. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, Jesus, Jesus came to a point and asked Peter, I said, who do people say I am? You have read it in your scriptures. Jesus asked Peter, asked disciples, of course, not only Peter, he asked all disciples, who do men say I am? I also asked you this morning, who do men say you are? Who do they say you are? The Peter said, you are the Messiah. He said, wow. Wow. Why would Jesus ask him or ask disciples? Who do men thought he was? Because it's important who you are. It's important, as it was important for Jesus, it's important to you who you are. It's important to you that you should know what man, what man of man you are, or man of man you are. It's important. Don't play that on it. It's not religion. Don't play that. Who do men say you are? Who do you represent? In that school, in that workshop, in that family, who do men say you are? What do you represent? Jesus had to ask them. It was Peter confirm who he was. Can men confirm who you are? Can men say authentically that you are a child of God? But Peter said, You are the Messiah. You are the Son of God. You don't say, Wow. Imagine when people, you ask people, Who am I? They say, You are a child of God. We are seeing your conduct. We are seeing your life. You are a child of God. I bet you it's not out of pride, but they want to feel elated inside of you. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm telling you the truth. Maybe in passing, just ask a few people, few of your friends, Who do you think I am? And in reply, they will tell you, right in your face, iPod, iPod, Miriam, or whoever, or Kiru, or whatever, Ngozi, you are a child of God. Or Peter, you are a child of God. I mean, I'm going to feel good. I'm going to feel happy. Because at least they know you are a child of God. It is important, of, it is important how they know you. Therefore, you cannot forget who you are. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You cannot forget who you are. You cannot forget, and how the only way to forget, like I said, in summary, is when you are not a doer of the word. You've been hearing God's word. This time, it is time to begin to do it. You have been hearing so many things, many teachings, in different areas. Nobody is there to force you. So you need to make up your mind. You need to make up your mind that I shall begin to do God's word in every area, in holiness, in giving. In evangelism, in study of my word. If you study your word always, 
and do God's word all the way, you can never forget who you are. You know what makes us not to you know what makes us to forget who we are? Because we don't even give attention to God's word. We don't give attention to God's word. We don't think it is important. We don't think that reading God's word, internalizing God's word, doing what the Bible says is important. All we do, we run a religion. We run something we call religion. Come to church on a Sunday. That is religion. Belong to a church. That is religion. Praise the Lord. I hear what I'm saying. Come to church on a Sunday. Come to Bible study on Tuesday. It's religion. Do this and do that. Even paying your tithe is a religion. Christianity is more than religion. Christianity is about living the life of Christ on this earth. That is when you have moved from religion. If you are still doing all the ceremonies that has to do with church, you were in a church, you are a member of this ministry, you attend this program or that program, these are religion. These are practice, these are tenets of religion. These are practice of religion. These are the things that make up religion. But the actual Christianity that you and I profess, you and I believe in, is when you live, when the life of Christ is seen through your life. He said, be imitators of me. Be imitators of God. When you begin to imitate Christ on this earth, that is when you have lived beyond religion. Praise the Lord. When you begin to do God's word, it's no more religion for you. When you begin to do God's word, it's no more religion. Religion is when you are not obeying God's word, but you are part and parcel of a ministry like this one. That is called religion. But when you live a life of obedience, a life of portraying what Jesus taught us, what Jesus is still teaching by the power of the Holy Ghost, then you have lived beyond religion. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. hallelujah. May you become doers after today in Jesus' name. Amen. May you become real ambassadors of Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. May you not forget who you are. May you never forget who you are. You're watching me online. May you never forget who you are. Don't ever forget this message. If you forget who you are from this day or you'll be forgetting. There is going to be a lot of problems. Shout hallelujah. I pray that, that those problems shall not come to you in Jesus' name. Can we stand up? Let's really appreciate God this morning. God, may I never forget who I am. May I never forget who I am. Now, I, I need you to look into your life, find out if you really have you forgotten who you are. In case you have forgotten, then it's a time to come back and reset your mind. And reset your understanding. The Bible says in Romans 12, it says, renew your mind, be, a, be your mind be renewed. Let this mind that was in Christ not dwell inside of you. Believe you me, if you forget who you are, you don't even know who you are. If you play religion, any of us are into religion. Come to church on a Sunday. Come to church on Tuesday. Come for prayer meeting. These are religion. They are good. Praise the Lord. I'm not condemning them. But you need to begin to live beyond religion. Beyond activities to action. Beyond activities. Beyond activities in the church, coming to Sunday like you are here this morning, wonderful. To God be the glory. But you need to begin to live beyond coming to activities. But you need to live just with obedience to God, doing His word. We have said some things about what we had from the school. We said something about grieving the Holy Ghost. Maybe the Holy Ghost will tell you to pray this time and that one, and you, you suddenly you you don't you you are, you are not your 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 conscience has been seared. When your conscience has been seared, then you are, you are practicing religion. When you are not open to correction, nobody can correct you. You are practicing religion. But if you are malleable, you can be changed. You can be, you are like a, a clay in the hands of God. Then you are no more practicing religion. They will become a doer. When you become a clay in the hands of God, God can turn you around. God can change you. God can, God can make you 
something out of you, then you are no more part of the religion. But when you are, you are no more a clay, God cannot remove you. God cannot handle you the way he wants. Then you are part of the religion. And that can only happen once you are a doer, not a hearer. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say, Father, help me to do God's work. I've been hearing a lot in different, in different subjects. Help me to begin to do it. It's not there not to hear. It's not there not to hear. I hear a lot about God's work. I hear a lot about God's work. I know so much. Some, of, some people out there, if you ask them anything on any subject, as you guess God's work, they will give it to you. Chapter and verses. Accurately. But to do it, Nawahala. These are the religion practices. They practice religion. When you do God's work, you are living beyond activities. You are practicing. You are, you are a doer. Then you begin to know who you are. And when you know who you are, there are things they can never say in any place. Begin to thank God. Begin to thank God. Begin to thank God, begin to appreciate God. Make me a doer of God's work. Make me a doer of God's work. Please pray that prayer. Say, Lord, give me the grace to do God's work. Make me a doer. The problem we have in the church today is because we are not doing it at all. Hey, fine preachers, wonderful preachers, but do what you have said, no way. Powerful Christians, do what you have said, no way. Make me a doer. That is where the blessings will start coming. Make me a doer, not just a hearer. People hear a lot. People hear, people have been hearing. There are too many avenues to hear God's word through television, through Facebook, through internet. So many areas to hear God's word. But unfortunately, few of us are doing the God's word. And the Bible says, it's like him then to a man that beholded himself in a mirror and straight away, Forgetting the manner of person he is. That is the kind of person that does not do God's work. Can you pray this morning? You're watching me online. You are here in this place. Say, Lord, give me the grace to begin to do your work. I've, I've been hearing a lot. I know a lot about God's work. There are so many fine preachers out there. There are so many wonderful preachers all over the world. There are so many places. There are, there are so many areas we're hearing God's work. But doing it has become a problem. Begin to appreciate God. Begin to appreciate God. Begin to appreciate God. Begin to appreciate God. Make me a doer. Make me a doer. Make me a doer. Say, say as many times you can say that. Say, make me a doer. If you can begin, if you can tell yourself the truth and begin to do God's work, a lot will change in your life. A lot of positivism begin to happen. Namely, anyone, name it in any area, it shall begin to do God's work. I know that if you don't know, you you ask. Once you get to know, you begin to do. Say, make me a doer. Don't be to talk, not to do. Talk and do. In the natural, we have to say, talk and do. I be talk and do. Say, make, make I be talk and do. Make I be here and do. Make me to hear and do. How can it be you have an instruction, you have, you have a word concerning a matter, and you are still arguing. You are still saying, how do I do it? It's not possible. You are still delaying. Pray and say, Lord, make me to be talk and do. Hear and do. Not just hear alone, but I hear and do. Give me that grace this morning. Say, Lord, give me that grace this morning. Give me that grace this morning. That I will hear and I will do. All I've heard, all I've read. That I will hear and I will do. Go ahead and pray that prayer this, this, this morning. Go ahead and pray that prayer and say, Lord, I will hear and do. Let your name be glorified. Be thou exalted. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Amen. May you never forget who you are in Jesus' name. Amen. In that family, in that, in that office, in that marriage, in that environment, in that post, in that keke. May you never forget who you are. Because if you forget, it spreads disaster. 
If you forget, that's when you are going to fight. If you forget, that's why you are going to talk like a drunkard because you have forgotten. May you never forget. My prayer for you this morning that it's going to ring in your subconscious that I will never forget who I said, Say after me, I will never forget who I am. You are not saying very well. Say, I will never forget who I am. In that place of war. In that place of business. In my marriage. In my neighborhood. In that school. In that in that boss. In that keke. In that okada. I will never forget who I am. God give me the grace. Give me the enablement. Not to forget who I, who I am, who I am from today. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Father, we thank you this morning. We bless your name for this 